Okay, we're rolling there. Okay, we're looking at the Mariner as it's packed in its uh, in its really nice foam shipping case, and uh, you'll notice on the bottom the way it comes from the factory is we have four additional pads, and these four pads then are to mount landing skids on. Now each of the landing skids then take four stainless steel screws, and they're scre screwed into the plastic. This takes me too long to do. It's very difficult to put the screws in and it's hard for the orientation and I think there may be a better setup. And I had to come up with a faster setup for that and also one that would accommodate different cameras, different gimbals and everything like that as well as add flotation. So while the Mariner's original configuration is good for people just flying stock or with a single GoPro, if you're getting into the next phase generation of water flying, there's another thing to consider. So what I've done is I've removed these four, they're just protective rubber tabs, and I have tapped the inside with a special thread. So I've made them threaded. Now the reason why I have made these threaded is because I have some special fittings that have O-ring seals which can go in there. Now, there is no water leak path in this. The O-ring seals simply allow whatever is put in here to cramp shut and lock tight onto it. In other words, it's almost like a miniature vice grip. So basically what you do is you take these uh, very, very rugged engineering thermoplastic fittings and you simply thread them into the area. Now you can put a little bit of uh, silicone on there or whatever you want. Now what you can do is you can get some, uh, some uh, fiberglass or especially some carbon fiber rods. And the carbon fiber rods then would go down inside there. Now notice that they actually go down and they stop about in there. Again, it's a sealed unit so you can never get water through. Okay, so what we've done is we've just put one of these fittings and actually we'd use four of them, one for each one of the legs. Now what I do is have a carbon fiber rod with a rubber tip on the end of it. So the rod goes in there and of course we tighten this thing down and lo and behold that's locked in place. So now we want to change the length of the legs easy. This sure saves putting in 16 tiny stainless steel screws. But the other advantage, you'll notice that there's a stopper. So what I can do when I put this in, I can actually put in a piece of foam around here. And this little grommet then would limit the travel of the foam. I can use a pull noodle between the two of them. So by using additional foam in conjunction with these, we have the flexibility of doing a heck of a lot of different things. Now, you're you can expand your horizons tremendously on this and one of the things that uh, I was trying to do is I have some very heavy oceanographic instrumentation because the Mariner itself will lift approximately five pounds. Now I'm not worried about the Mariner lifting it, I'm worried about the Mariner lighting on the water with an additional five pounds because it's going to get very low in the water. It will still float but it's going to get very low and as I try to move it as a boat I'm too low and my props will start digging in. So what I've done is I've designed some floats. Now in this case rather than using carbon fiber you can go to any hardware store. Uh, I went to just a, 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 a metals company and I bought some 3 16th aluminum uh, solid rod. Now I've got 20 foot of this for $4.50 so you can do a lot of playing with this thing. So I ran the rod down through a pool noodle. Now you can see what happens. I can put this, put this in here, secure this in here, and lo and behold I have additional flotation. Now notice I can change the angle on this, I can increase the size of the flotation, I can make it shorter if I want, so this gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility. Plus, if you're on waves, you've turned this thing into a catamaran. So we've got outrigger type hulls giving us tremendous stability on this. But you notice with our camera mounted here, we are in no way affecting the field of view of any type of filming that we'll be doing for it. So again, a very simple area to modify and to change it. Like I said, it absolutely couldn't be easier for field use. Okay, we'll, hop, we'll stop it right
Okay, I'm rolling if you want to start. Well, one of the big advantages of a drone is filming. And the big advantage of a waterproof drone is the possibility of not only underwater filming, but maybe saving the camera when it goes into the water. The camera normally of choice is one of the models of GoPro. And of course, what we can do is we can put the GoPro into its uh, what they call waterproof box. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with these. Uh, uh, do provide waterproof integrity probably down to about 130, 140 feet, which is more than I care to go. The cameras themselves then actually have a little snap bracket that everybody's familiar with that actually just mates on the bottom of the drone. You can control the angle and control your settings on that. Very, very easy to obtain footage. But this has two distinct disadvantages. Now, the advantage is you could land on the water and you're not destroying your camera. You can take great pictures underwater in this lens, but you don't have FPV. You can't actually see first-person view of what the camera is seeing. Now, many people then say, oh, what we'll do is we'll use the GoPro like this and we'll take an output here and then we'll run it into our FPV. And if we do that, that's fine. You can get an FPV, but guess what? You've got a raw camera, and this thing hits the water. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, not repairable, to tell you the truth. Now, it's the same thing with the gimbal. You mount this thing on a gimbal, you're going to get great stability. But if it does go in the water, you can forget the camera and pretty much forget the gimbal, too. So you've got a lot of money for that one mistake. You're going to save the Mariner, no doubt about it. But you'll lose a lot of high-value video equipment. So how? How can we solve that problem? Well, first off, let's talk about the simplest solution, and that is protecting the waterproof GoPro camera in an FPV situation. So, one of the things that I have devised, I'll move some hardware over, is I have a GoPro Hero 3, 3 Plus, whatever you want, inside a housing. But in this housing, I have a special extended back that normally the backpack fits into and a circuit board which allows me to get video out directly so i don't have to go to the side 10 pin usb connector now that wire comes out a special through hall fitting that is sealed there's o-rings actually double o-rings into that so when i seal the back of this unit my camera is totally sealed yet i have a video output so now I can mount this thing underneath my, uh, my Mariner quadcopter by a standard bracket. What feeds up through the top of the Mariner bracket is a cable providing the audio video to this new thing I call the top hat. So while well, this is the finished one, let me show you the basic design. So what I've done is I've taken the acrylic plate and I've simply added extra room onto the top of it. So what we have is we have an O-ring seal around the margin. We have a uh, very tight fitting uh, sealing plate onto it. And we have a very lightweight polycarbonate lid. So the lid then goes inside, flips down, mashes on the O-ring. Now if it were to go underwater, a wave would hit it, it would compress in the O-ring. So it's for all intents and purposes, highly waterproof, okay? But this, this gives us the advantage of a lot more volume to put electronic equipment in. And it also puts things up high. And so if we're filming on or near the ocean surface, we don't want any interference with waves. And so by getting the antennas up higher, that gives us a great advantage. Okay, so this is the basic, the basic model. Let's see how I put it in operation. So I have the same type of unit here, but in this case I have my two diversity antennas. And if you look closely, you can actually see the, uh, the uh, NASA termination points of each one of the antennas on the inside. Notice my red marker here and my red arrow indicate uh, the forward-looking direction. Turn my transmitter off. And I have a wire that comes in here, which will be sealed taking the video input. Now, the two problems that I found being a novice is I lose orientation very easy of it, even in first-person view. So if you notice on the side, 
there's a waterproof boot that goes over this. I put a master switch, and the master switch has two orientations on it. The center position is off. If I pull it in the left position, it's the lights only. Now, what do I mean by light? I have a 3-watt high-intensity white light facing forward, and I have a 3-watt high-intensity blue light facing backwards. It could put red, but I, I kind of like blue for the back. Um, so when flipped in this direction, those lights will come on. If I flip it in the other direction, in other words, to the right, notice it said lights and video. So I not only have the lights on, I actually supply power to my video transmitter, and I'm transmitting. What this does is it allows me control of the internal circuit without having to take the tops off when, they, when we have a moist or a wet environment or a splash zone. All we do is turn the switch. We pre-check it on shore. If it's pre-checked, we go out there and we take care of it. Now, to give you a demo of that, what I'll do is I'll take the cable from this. This is the power cable that comes down. So you notice that that will fit inside the battery charge plug. Again, you want to make sure you have black to black. So I'm simply plugging it in like this. Okay, so black to black. I've got green, white, and red. So I'm actually providing either 3.7, 7.2, or about 12 volts here. I only use the 12 volts, actually. So if I turn it to the light direction, there is my white light, and there is my blue light. Okay, Three watts of high intense power, and even in direct sunlight, we can see that. Okay, now it's off. Now we want to actually turn the video on and the lights. We flip it in this direction. I am transmitting the video as well as having the lights going on. All pulling power then from this single connector to an existing battery that I have.